everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Varun Kaushal and I am a legal intern at Lexis and Company. Today we are going to discuss about religious liberties and women rights. India is famous worldwide as democratic, republic, secular and sovereign country. It is popularly known as for its rich and royal culture, sacred traditional customs and rituals. In Hinduism, women are worshipped as goddesses. Our religious scriptures believe that a woman represents strength of emotions, balance in life, high intellect and defines aesthetics. She is the creator, a very important element of the whole life cycle. She is a replica of various goddesses in herself. She is a strong mother, adorable daughter and beautiful wife. She competes the world. One should worship her equally as she brings life to existence. It is evident in the holy scriptures such as Manusmriti which quotes Yatra Narayastu Pujyante Ramante Tatra Devta. It means where women are worshipped, God resides there only. But the irony is the place where a woman is considered equal to goddess. Not only slay innocent unborn lives on the basis of their identity of being a girl, but also make her suffer throughout her life by restricting her liberties, committing various violent offenses against her, abusing her identity and existence, questioning her purity and what not. A woman has to face societal pressures, gender discrimination and sufferings in the name of culture and customs throughout her life. She is even forbidden to retain her fundamental rights to participate in religious activities and rituals. It is believed that a woman is impure when she is menstruating and that is why women are barred from participating and practicing religious rituals and to enter the temple during the menstrual cycle. A woman has a right to equality before law, a right to religious, uh, religious liberties and also lawful rights against discrimination based on her sex, gender, status, etc. Any infringement to their fundamental rights are indeed an infringement of law and order. There are temples that bars women during her menstrual cycle and restrict them to stay away from religious rituals and places. Just because of the orthodox mindset and societal norms, these temples not only question a woman's purity on the basis of her menstruation process but also prohibits her to retain religious activities and worship the deity by the suppression of her will. No religious scriptures defines a woman as impure. The Honorable Supreme Court and High Court of India have passed various landmark judgments supporting women's religious rights such as in the la landmark case of Haji Ali in which the ban was lifted from the mosque by the court to grant an entry to all the Muslim women. Similarly, a 400-year-old tradition came to an end in Shani Shingapur uh, which restricted women's right to offer prayers at the sacred platform and touch the deity at the Shanji Shingapur temple. The court has made it clear that no woman will be discriminated or prohibited from visiting temples or practice their religious rites. It was a huge achievement for all the women to overcome various hurdles, defeat societal barriers and get their rights. But yet this is not the end. To bring the change, it is important to change the mindset of the society, to clear all the old myths, break superstitions and make people aware of the reality and law. Society needs to evolve with the time and forget the old partial customs. They must accept the creation of God. We have different body, different perception. One should treat them equally. As rightly mentioned by Swami Vivekanan, the best thermometer to the progress of a nation is its treatment of its women. Major concern of religious activities and rights does not revolve around just one or two aforementioned factors, but there is a need to highlight the importance of women's rights and participation in religious activities as they affect a woman's life on various aspects such as female feticide, marriage reforms, exclusion of women from religious rituals and institutions, barring their entry in graveyards, temples, mosques, and unfair unjust laws and biased customs and rituals forced on them. Women never had equal rights and participation in religious matters of the society. Being a uh, patriarchal society, male dominancy always ruled over everyone. Religious matters and affairs were handled by just men of the society and interference by a woman was never entertained by the society. In the name of religion, people fall prey to many superstitions and blindly believe the old customs which were passed as cultural legacy to them. Legally, if we analyze the whole scenario, it's evident that a lot of times both the guilty mind and guilty act can be present while committing heinous offenses against women to satisfy superstitious beliefs. For instance, dominating female fetuses, sacrificing female infants to worship goddesses for baby boy in the name of rituals. These are called as ritual killings. It is now rarely evident but still practiced secretly in many reli uh, religions. In a recent case, a brutal murder of two twin girls came to limelight in the state of Andhra Pradesh, wherein two innocent girls lost their lives for the sake of religious rituals. 
it is difficult to resist that even in this area, in this era, such brutal crimes are happening because of the blind faith of people. The society has left no parameters to judge a woman from tip to toe. Her character is judged on the basis of her close religious practices, thoughts and feelings and what not. No one cares how she feels anyway. Even in marriages, in the name of rituals, a woman has to go through certain tests to prove her purity. She is questioned for everything she has even for her life. This whole thing gets worse because of the irritational, irrational beliefs and lack of knowledge in the society. We are the part of this society. We need to spot the difference between ethical practices and unethical activities. Barring women from her basic rights or continue serious offenses in the name of religion should be strictly prohibited under the provisions of Indian law. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, please do ask in the comment section. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe the channel. Next click.